Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to an impromptu news edition of the Garden Report. We do have two minor moves for the Celtics here as this week rolls along. First week of August getting going here. And not necessarily two signings that start to fill out these three open roster spots that the Celtics have left for their regular season roster. They've signed Fee Cabangele as well as J.D. Davis into two-way slots. Uh, they still have three full-time positions left on the team. And the two players that they signed here, Bruno Caboclo entering his seventh season on a team, as well as Noah Vonley, who was drafted uh, pretty early, number nine back in 2014. So both these players, a lot of similarities between them. Both in that 2014 draft class, Caboclo goes 20th overall, both first-round picks. Both guys standing about 6'9", 6'10", who have serious length, uh, shot-blocking potential on Caboclo's side, uh, Von Ley more of a bruiser inside, the heavier of these two players, and actually has the only legitimately productive NBA season between uh, these two, who both ended up overseas last season. So Celtics giving both an opportunity here to break back into the league, to impact their big man position, and that is the sense that I have is that both these guys are in the mix as front court players. Now, both have played versatile roles in the past. Caboclo can handle the ball a little bit on the perimeter, make some passing plays, likes to dribble downhill. Vonley, more of an off-ball mover, but can dribble downhill and drive to the basket. Uh, these are guys that I think defensively, as well as offensively, the Celtics want to see be able to set picks, roll to the basket, finish around the rim with their length, and rebound at a high rate, which Caboclo was able to do last year. So let's start with him. Now, has the reputation of two years from being two years away from the draft night, uh, has had a number of stints now starting in Toronto, uh, goes to Sacramento in a trade for Syracuse's Malachi Richardson, and Memphis, short two-year stint there where he played most consistently 2018-19, averaged 23 minutes a game in 34 appearances, eight points, four rebounds. Still, not the efficiency you want to see from a center. His career average from the field is 40.3%. Dreadful. So not surprising that he ends up leaving Memphis, going to Houston where he frustrated fans uh, most considerably. His minutes there were not good whatsoever. So he ends up abroad, uh, plays a short, short stint in France, 10 games, I believe it was. Uh, a very short stint over there where he averaged 10 and 5. Not great, but then goes back to Brazil where he's originally a native of and has this monster season last year in the top division, Sao Paulo. Uh, FC is where he played 24 points per game, 11 rebounds per game. Those are the second best averages of any player in the league. Three blocks per game, 3.6 exactly, and had a 29-7-3 and performance in the championship game. MVP of the season in Brazil. So a rejuvenate Caboclo, who's now 26 years old, still fairly young, came into the league early, you see him now at Summer League where he did play with the Utah Jazz. So we have pretty recent film of him uh, playing a five spot with Utah, focusing more on the interior, using his 7-7 wingspan, basically just reach up and dunk. There's some intriguing things he showed there in Utah where ultimately he finished with a seven block game in the Utah edition of the Summer League, which was pretty impressive. And overall, between all the Summer League games, five of them he appeared in, he ends up averaging 12 points per game, shoots 60% from the field, which is about what he did in Brazil. Uh, still a little bit better shooting form from three, but not the shot you want to see him taking throughout his career, 30% from the three-point line, 30% in Vegas, rebounded at a higher rate, 6.4 per game, and ends up blocking one point two shots per game in the end productive numbers and in that mix at center he could potentially be one of these guys who whether it's Luke Cornette or Fee Cabin Gele fill some minutes there where the Celtics need them now is he more of a back-end rotation player who's going to be more on the bench 
that's going to be the reality, I think, for Caboclo, if he makes this team at all. Uh, but overall, throughout his career, he's had a number of different stints in this league, and he's shown that he necessarily doesn't belong at the NBA level. G League, some productivity overseas now, an enormously productive season, but is he just that much of a rung below the NBA uh, competition level that he's not going to be able to break through no matter the situation, no matter the role, and certainly in front of him, players who are going to compete for a roster spot here, but do they like having him at practice? Do they like having him in an emergency role? We've seen guys, whether it's Killan Martin, Malik Fitz, even Jabari Parker, who was sort of between that Ainge Stevens line for two seasons there, was a guy who had that top end draft pedigree, who the Celtics liked having around, gave some minutes to, different situation, but ultimately wanted to see if the talent was still there and it wasn't in Parker's case after multiple injuries. Caboclo, different story. Started basketball later in his life. Couple NBA stints. Ends up forced overseas. Serious, serious muscle put on. Go watch the highlights from Utah. He is definitely gearing up to play an interior-oriented game. And if he does focus on the screening, the rebounding, the rolling, it could be a spot where he finds another opportunity in the NBA. Now, Noah Vonley has shown more at the NBA level. About the same age as Caboclo, 26, one year at Indiana, from the Boston area, born in Salem, played at Haverhill, went and played at the New Hampton School before Indiana for his prep uh, productivity, and had a great career through that point, but at the NBA level, hasn't quite shown it yet. And you look at his career numbers, better rebounder overall through his career, with more oomph immediately, more weight, more power than Caboclo has matched him with here. Ends up having a, I thought, productive season with the Knicks in 18-19. I believe that was the team Ennis Cantor played on as well. Just this big, big front line. 8.4 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game. Uh, ends up shooting 47% from the field. But more of a perimeter player, more of a cutter, more of a guy who had the ball in his hands a little bit more. Uh, is he another guy that the Celtics look at here and say, center? I, I think a lot of his height is more like neck-based. You look at him, I don't think there's as much length there as Caboclo, even though he's 7'4", seven, seven, wingspan, still pretty impressive. Uh, so this guy has the measurables, but where has he found productivity so far in his career? He really hasn't. Chicago, Portland, or not Chicago, uh, Charlotte, but he was in Chicago as well. The Knicks, Timberwolves, Nuggets, Nets for four games. Another guy who's had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity here and then ends up out of the league last year playing for the shanghai sharks his numbers there competitive not the best competition in that league but enough for the celtics to take a look here and say come into the training camp let's see what you can do 14.3 points per game 9.1 rebounds per game two assists as well two steals a block per game effective and shoots 38.8 percent from three you know this is a guy with a three-point shot that is definitely more reliable than caboclo's probably a guy you look at and say we like his switching ability more than caboclo's and we like his ability to play a number of different positions more than caboclo so ultimately do you roll with him here because of the versatility caboclo i think you're looking at him as more of a strict center right now in terms of how he's developed how he's built his body at this point but Reasonably for both these players, I don't see either of them impacting the Celtics in any way, shape, or form next year. It does say, however, a lot about how the Celtics are viewing this five position. Look for some more versatile, interchangeable parts. Uh, look for some guys that could potentially fill minutes on a rest night if needed. Uh, but only really go for a major solution, really spend resources on that position if there's an emergency. They have the trade exceptions going into next year, the 5.9 as well as the $6.9 million exception. They have future picks at their disposal. And effectively, Robert Williams and Al Horford stagger minutes. So right now, they like Luke Cornett. Fee Cavangeli earned that spot out of Summer League. Caboclo effectively did the same for his roster spot here. And the Celtics, as it stands, still three roster spots uh, to fill with guaranteed deals for next year. Caboclo, Vonley both joining the team on training camp basis, uh, which the Celtics can fill four more spots uh, up to 18 until the end of training camp. So for now, still 
a lot of roster management to be done in Boston as well as the rest of the league. But the Celtics add two names, two players with high-end draft pedigree from earlier in their careers to the names you probably recognize. Guys who haven't shown much at the NBA level right now, but after some promising seasons abroad are going to get one more chance at making the league with the Celtics here. We, of course, at the Garden Reporter brought to you by Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash garden. Get a year's supply of vitamin D, five free travel packs. With your first purchase, go get a subscription. You'll get the bottle. You'll get a mixing cup. Uh, they'll hold the powder and the powder filled with nutrients, uh, probiotics, vitamins, everything you need to round out your health. Start to set a healthier basis for yourself day in and day out just by pouring in a cup of water and drinking. I'm Bobby Manning here for the Garn Report. We will talk to you soon.